Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I have for you the story of Sylvanas Windrunner, the Banshee Queen of the Forsaken and the War Chief of the Horde. Next week we're going to be covering Andrew and Rin, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when that video comes out. As of our previous video where we covered Jaina Pridemore, I'm aiming for a condensed version of the story that includes all of the key events, but not every tiny detail. Anyway, enough talk, let's get to it. Long before Sylvanas became one of the Forsaken, she was a High Elf. And she wasn't just any High Elf either, she was one of the prestigious Windrunners of Silvermoon. She lived at Windrunner Spire in Quell Falas, which is still in game and can be found in the Ghostlands. There she grew up with two sisters, Illyria and Verissa, both of whom are pretty important when it comes to Warcraft lore. Illyria went through the Dark Portal with Turalyon at the end of Warcraft 2, and we've only just reconnected with her in Legion. Verissa, on the other hand, stayed in Azeroth, working as an agent of the Kirin Tor, and eventually becoming leader of the Silver Covenant. Additionally, Verissa is the widow of Ronin, who was the former leader of the Kirin Tor prior to Jaina. It's also been mentioned that Sylvanas had at least two brothers, but we know very little about them, apart from the fact that they're dead, and that it wasn't pretty. Early in her life, Sylvanas joined the Rangers of Silvermoon, eventually becoming Ranger General, leading all High Elven forces. We don't actually know if Sylvanas had any involvement in the events of the First War, which, for those of you who don't know, is the events that happened during Warcraft 1. Though prior to the Second War breaking out, she won her reputation as an intelligent and fearless leader, while leading her rangers against the forest trolls of the Armani Empire. At this time, she also controversially recruited the first and only human to ever join the rangers, a man by the name of Nefanos Maris, who many at the time believed she was romantically involved with. Many took offence at Sylvanas allowing a human to join the rangers, and even Kalfas Sunstrider insisted that she dismiss him from service. She of course refused, claiming that he would make a loyal ally, which he did, with the rangers winning many battles under his command. I also find it pretty ironic that Kalfas was the one worried about betrayal, but that's a story for another video. When the second war broke out between Horde and Alliance, which are the events that occurred during Warcraft 2, Sylvanas fought the Horde alongside his sisters. The High Elves were brought into the conflict when Sylvanas discovered that the mysterious forest fires that had been occurring were in fact caused by the Horde. They had been using Dragonfire in an attempt to burn Quelfalas in advance of their full assault. With the support of the human commander Turalyon, Sylvanas and her rangers were able to defeat the Horde in battle and eventually forced them back to the Dark Portal. This Dark Portal that was opened by Medivh was what had allowed the Orcs to originally come to Azeroth in the first place. After defeating the Horde forces and pushing them back through the Dark Portal, they were able to destroy it. Though not before Sylvanas' sister Illyria travelled through it to take the fight to the Horde on their homeworld of Draenor. Of course, with the portal destroyed, Illyria had no way of returning. Sylvanas chose not to follow Illyria through the portal so she could stay behind and hunt down any remaining orcs in Quafalas. And of course, she was Ranger General so she couldn't exactly abandon the rest of the army just to follow her sister. However, there have probably been times since where she wishes she did go through the portal. As just under 15 years after the second war concluded, the third war began, and that's when things really started to go badly for Sylvanas. Prince Arthas, after becoming corrupted by the Lich King, betraying the Alliance and murdering his father King Terenus, shows up in Quafalas, hoping to use the powers of the Sunwell to resurrect his little friend Cal Fazad. Sylvanas made a valiant attempt to save Silvermoon, but was eventually overcome and mortally wounded by Arthas in single combat. Arthas was furious at Sylvanas for holding him back from his plans for so long, and he wouldn't grant her the clean death that she requested. Instead, he corrupted her body and brought her back as a banshee under the Lich King's command. Just for some clarity, at this point, Arthas and the Lich King are two separate beings, but Arthas is essentially under the Lich King's command since he picked up the Runeblade Frostmourne. In her banshee form, Sylvanas was detached from her mortal body, though Arthas kept it anyway just to taunt her because he's the kind of guy who really holds a grudge. The official story given by the High Elves at the time was actually that she had died a hero, valiantly defending Quafalas from the undead, which of course is true, but they also added that her body had been burned to ash in the fire that destroyed Silvermoon, though word soon spread of her true fate. In her new form, Sylvanas was bound entirely to the will of the Lich King, and therefore by proxy she was tied to Arthas' will as well. However, due to Arthas being the bastard he was, he decided to allow her to keep her self-awareness so she could witness the destruction of her people firsthand. He forced her to watch as he killed the High Elf King, Anasterion Sunstrider, and then as he used the powers of the sacred elven Sunwell to resurrect his undead ally, Kalfazad. 
She was also forced to stand there and witness Khalfazad bring Archimond, second in command of the Burning Legion, into the world with the intent to destroy it entirely. Sylvanas, still unable to break from Arthas' hold on her, became one of the leaders of his forces, helping him to purge Lordaeron of the living. During this period, Sylvanas actually managed to get hold of her body, which she then repossessed and became a sort of reanimated corpse, one of the undead rather than just a banshee. This explains why Sylvanas looks the way she does today. At the end of the Third War, when the races of Azeroth banded together to finally defeat Archimond at the World Tree, the Lich King's grip on Sylvanas began to fade. Again, remember that Arthas isn't the Lich King at this point, that only happens later when they merge into one being at Ice Crown. Sylvanas, being the smart cookie she is, kept this information from Arthas. She continued to feign allegiance to him until the opportunity arose to take her revenge. She orchestrated an ambush in which she managed to paralyse him with the use of a poison arrow. Arthas, thinking that it was over for him, asked her just to finish him. Of course Sylvanas is pretty pissed off with Arthas by this point and refuses. She tells him that he's going to suffer as she has suffered. Unfortunately for Sylvanas, at that very moment, Kalthazad turns up. He kills her banshees and he manages to rescue Arthas. Luckily, Sylvanas manages to escape, telling Arthas that she will never stop hunting him. Now that she was truly free from Arthas' hold, she attempted to resume her previous life, but quickly realised that she couldn't. What Arthas had done to her had corrupted her forever, and the natural world no longer responded to her in the way it once did when she was a high elf. Sylvanas decided to embrace what she had become, and raised an army to conquer the Plaguelands, which are the now decimated lands that were once Lord Ron before they were conquered by Arthas. To achieve this, she first had to defeat the Dreadlords, who had taken advantage of Arthas' absence to take control of these lands for themselves. The Dreadlords had originally invited Sylvanas to be part of their plan to overthrow Arthas, but she had refused to join them as she had plans of her own. Sylvanas was successful in conquering the Plaguelands and was able to kill and enslave the Dreadlords. In fact, she even forced one of the Dreadlords that she managed to enslave, named Varimathras, to kill another Dreadlord known as Balnazar, even though it was strictly forbidden for Dreadlords to kill one another. By conquering the Plaguelands, she was able to make a home for the Forsaken, who were those undead that were now freed from Arthas' control. Though sadly, they were seen as nothing more than monsters by the other races, who wished only to hunt them down and kill them. With the help of her new people, Sylvanas founded the Undercity, beneath the ruins of Old Lordaeron, and was eventually able to gain an alliance with the Horde, which leads us to the events of World of Warcraft. During Classic World, Sylvanas was fairly quiet. She ruled her new people, the Forsaken, and she continued to plot her eventual revenge against Arthas for what he had done to her, and also against the Alliance for turning her back on her people. During this period, she continued to free as many of the undead from Arthas' control as possible, in order to boost the ranks of the Forsaken. One of the Forsaken she managed to turn was Nathanus Maris. He was a human ranger we mentioned earlier, and she made him her champion. Though in Undeath, their apparent romance is far less clear-cut, as though they display a deep loyalty to one another, Nathanus later mentions that unlike in his mortal form, his heart no longer has any room for anything but rage and contempt. Which, to be honest, doesn't sound like the makings of a happy home life. Again, throughout the Burning Crusade, Sylvanas is quiet for the most part, most notably offering her support in bringing the Blood Elves into the Horde. During Wrath of the Lich King, however, Sylvanas returns to the main storyline. At the beginning of Wrath, Varimathras, remember Sylvanas' enslaved dreadlord, betrays her. He actually nearly kills her and drives her out of the forsaken capital of Undercity. At this point, a rogue faction had developed within the Forsaken, and without Sylvanas to lead them, this faction was able to run riot. Led by Grand Apothecary Putrus, these members of the Forsaken betrayed both the Alliance and the Horde at the Wrathgate. They released a newly developed plague that killed hundreds of soldiers on both sides, most notably Bolvar Fordragon of the Alliance. Sylvanas does eventually manage to retake Undercity and kill Varimathras, and the Alliance have Putrus executed. Though during the Siege of Undercity, a major battle between the Horde and Alliance is only narrowly avoided by the actions of Jaina Proudmoore. See Jaina's story on this channel for a little more on that. Following this, Sylvanas takes part in the final assault on Ice Crane, which is the citadel of Arthas found in the frozen continent of Northrend. Within the Halls of Reflection, she finally gets her opportunity to confront Arthas. And although she's warned by the spirit of Ufa that Arthas, now the Lich King, can only be defeated at the Frozen Throne, she attempts it nonetheless as she's so driven by her hatred for him. After realising that Ufa was in fact right and almost being killed by Arthas in single combat, she manages to escape with the help of a group of Horde heroes. After the final defeat of the Lich King, Sylvanas is left with a bittersweet feeling. Azeroth had been freed from Arthas, but the damage done to her could never be reversed. 
With this realization and with no hope for her future, Sylvanas threw herself from the top of Ice Crown onto the Saronite spikes below. As she was falling to her death, she saw a vision of Garrosh Hellscream leading the Horde to defeat, and many of her forsaken perishing in the process. Then she hits the spikes, and for the second time, Sylvanas dies. This time she finds her spirit floating in a dark void of hopelessness and regret, a realm in which her spirit would subside for all eternity. Just as Sylvanas is contemplating this bleak future, the Valkyrie turn up. These powerful beings were previously enslaved by Arthas, but no longer now that he was dead. The Valkyrie offered to make a pact with Sylvanas. One of them would take her place in death if she would agree to bind herself to the other eight. It gets a little complicated here, but basically without being bound to a powerful vessel such as Sylvanas, the Valkyrie would have been unable to continue to exist as anything more than slaves. Sylvanas agrees this pact, presumably for two reasons. Number one, she doesn't want to see her people die at the hands of Garrosh Hellscream. And number two, the future for her spirit wasn't exactly looking great, was it? The Valkyrie brings Sylvanas back to the realm of the living, though living isn't exactly the best term to describe Sylvanas at this point, but there you go. This brings us to the Cataclysm expansion, in which Sylvanas leads the undead against Gilneas. This was a campaign in which she was scolded by the new war chief at Garrosh Hellscream for her use of dishonorable tactics such as using Forsaken Blight and allowing her Valkyrie to resurrect the dead to bolster the Forsaken ranks. Gen Greymane, the king of Gilneas, managed to eventually drive Sylvanas out, but not before a direct conflict between the two of them, in which Gen's son Liam threw himself in front of an arrow that Sylvanas had intended for Gen. Liam was killed, and a bitter hatred was formed between the two. Following this, while still in Gilneas, Sylvanas resurrects Lord Godfrey, a former Gilnean noble. However, he later betrays her, hoping to take Gilneas for himself, and kills her. That's right, the Ranger General of Silvermoon, the Banshee Queen of the Forsaken, and now even the War Chief of the Horde, was defeated by this guy. Luckily for Sylvanas, she still had some Valkyrie left, and again they were able to bring her back. Though this time it required three of them to be sacrificed, and her supply was starting to run pretty low. Basically, she couldn't afford to keep dying, and this was compounded by the fact that, by this point, Sylvanas had discovered that the Valkyrie were the only ones who could resurrect the dead in order to create more Forsaken whose inability to procreate would mean their inevitable extinction without the Valkyrie. And regardless of Sylvanas' disdain for most of the living beings of Azeroth, it can't be said that she doesn't care about her Forsaken. Tensions grow even further between Sylvanas and Garrosh when he finds out that she's raising undead to bolster the Forsaken ranks, something that he considered an abomination. And for this reason, Sylvanas' hatred of Garrosh only deepened. Though it is worth mentioning that it wasn't only Garrosh who was beginning to take issue with Sylvanas' actions at this point. Her remorseless attitude and desire to raise the dead started to draw comparisons between herself and the Lich King. In the next expansion, Mists of Pandaria, Sylvanas doesn't really feature heavily, apart from being present at the events that transpire around the rise and fall of Garrosh Hellscream as War Chief of the Horde. She was strongly against Garrosh's plans to destroy Theramore, not due to any compassion for the Alliance, but because she felt that the Forsaken would suffer in the Eastern Kingdoms if the Alliance's main power base in Kalimdor was destroyed. Under assurances from Garrosh that any Alliance retaliation would be dealt with, she sent a small force to represent her at the Siege of Feramor, which due to the use of a mana bomb was totally obliterated by Garrosh. Though following that, the Alliance and Horde sieged Ogrimmar and eventually Garrosh was defeated and captured. Sylvanas wished him to be executed immediately and wasn't happy with the prospect of him facing a trial instead. She actually plotted to assassinate Garrosh with her sister Verisa by poisoning his food. Verisa's motive was the fact that her lover Ronin had been killed as a result of Garrosh destroying Feramore. However, Verisa, who was actually at the time considering ruling the Forsaken alongside Sylvanas, had a sudden change of heart and she revealed their plot to Anduin Rin, who managed to stop Garrosh from eating the poisoned food. Sylvanas was heartbroken at this betrayal from Verisa and she vowed that she would never love anyone again. You kind of feel sorry for Sylvanas at this point, but to be fair she had neglected to mention that Verisa that she was planning to murder her in order to make her one of the Forsaken, so it's hard to be too sympathetic. The next big appearance by Sylvanas is at the Broken Shore with that awesome cinematic at the start of Legion. This is your Legion spoiler warning by the way. At the very start of Legion, the Alliance and Horde have been working together against the much greater threat of the Burning Legion. However, this uneasy truce was shattered after Sylvanas withdrew the Horde forces during the battle, which essentially resulted in the death of King Varian Rin of the Alliance. The Alliance believed that Sylvanas had betrayed them, but in fact she withdrew under the orders of War Chief Vol'jin as it became clear that the Horde were about to be defeated and perhaps even totally wiped out. Back in Algrimmar, Vol'jin, who was mortally wounded at the Broken Shore, made Sylvanas War Chief of the Horde with his final words. 
During Legion, Sylvanas also attempted to enslave the Valkyr that were not corrupted by the Lich King, in order to deal with the fact that her original Valkyr were becoming increasingly low in number. She managed to trap and enslave a powerful Valkyr known as Aya, but her plan was foiled by Gen Greymane, now even more upset with Sylvanas after the death of both his son Liam and his friend King Varian Wren. As discussed previously, without the Valkyr, the Forsaken as a race will eventually disappear. They are also the only method to bring Sylvanas back if she gets herself killed again. So actually, at some point, Sylvanas might have to make the decision between her own life and the future of her people. The final deeply significant thing that happened to Sylvanas in Legion is that she was finally reunited with her sister Illyria, who he encountered when travelling to the world of Argus to take the fight to the Burning Legion. Freshly reunited, the three Windrunner sisters work together to reclaim their ancestral home of Windrunner Spire. Unfortunately, Sylvanas and Illyria were unable to reconcile their differences and neither could accept what the other one had become. Sylvanas argued that she never chose to become undead, whereas Illyria had chosen to become an abomination of the Void. At this point, Sylvanas considered having them both assassinated by the Dark Rangers that she had hidden, but she decided not to, claiming that her sisters would serve her yet. This pretty much leads us to battle for Azeroth. The truce between Horde and Alliance has been destroyed, and we next see Sylvanas defending the Undercity from an Alliance siege led by the new Alliance High King, Anduin Wren. But that's as far as I'm going to take this one as I don't want to give you any spoilers regarding Sylvanas' story surrounding or during the events of Battle for Azeroth. What I will say is that if you're a reader then you can check out the new Warcraft novel Before the Storm. In my opinion it does a really good job of setting the scene. I'll put a link to the book in the description down below but obviously read the reviews and decide for yourself whether it's worth your money. Like I said I enjoyed it personally but I'm a bad judge to be honest because I get just too excited by Warcraft lore. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you did, and I look forward to seeing you next time for the story of Andrew and Rin.